Okay, so here, so here is the sugya. It's an amazing thing. Every sugya, every topic is, is great and wonderful, but this is, is really, really special. So people ask, okay, you want to say that we're living in miraculous times and appreciate God for all he's done? Okay, it's wonderful. To institute a new yantif. It's a chutzpah. A new what? A new yantif. We're starting a new yantif called Yom Yishlayim, called Yom Atzmud. How do you make a new yantif? You want to go ahead and feel appreciation to Hashem? Fine. You want to say thank you, Hashem? You want to be like Brez of Hasid and they go into the forest at five in the morning and they scream, Tati! You want to go and scream, Tati, Tashem? Thank you, Hashem. You want to walk in the streets of Ramat Shemesh? Thank you, Hashem. That's great. Praise Hashem. Thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem. There's a song you may or may not know from a singer, Joey Nuka, a very relatively new one in the Jewish singer world. Na, 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 na. Thank you, Hashem. You may be familiar with it. So go and walk around. Just thank you, Hashem. 2,000 years we've been waiting for this. Thank you. That's all nice. Praise Hashem. Say to Hillam. Rock on Hollow is one technical shayla. Another shayla is, can he make a new Yom Tif? Can he put on the calendar? You have you have Yom Kippur, you have Sukkot, and you have Pesach, you have Shavuos, you have Hanukkah and Purmid Rabbanan from the holy sages of the Gemara. And now we have from the holy rabbis of 1948, two holidays, 1948. Yom Hatzvot, 1967, a new holiday called what? Yom Yerushalayim. That's, that's a chutzpah, no? How do you do that? You can't go ahead and make new holidays. That's beyond. That's more than no, 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 no. I thank you, Hashem. That's, that's just, where is that coming from? It's a fantastic Shaila. Fantastic Shaila, is it not? How do we make new holidays? Holy And who could decide? Who has the authority? And may I eventually to say the chutzpah? Make up new holidays. It's a good question. Appreciate it and be and appreciative of Hashem for all the miracles that He's given us and be part of it and make a great. But that's a red line, is it not? Right? So the answer should be everyone should say, and the more you're going to learn halach with me, the more you're going to learn to answer. I don't know. And let's look at the sources. I am a huge fan of source-based Judaism, where everything I say, I hope, is straight back step down to the sources. And I don't want to hear someone say to me, every yeshiva bachar is exempt from learning, because that's more important to Hashem than fighting. Maybe, maybe not. Show me sources. And someone says to me, what? Your blood is redder than you learn Yeshiva. Your blood is redder than his blood. And he has to go fight and give up his life possibly for the country. And your son not because he's learning. Of course, everyone has to fight. Show me the sources. Emotions. We can talk about emotions all we want. We could talk about how you feel about the topic. We could talk about how you're so excited about the topic. How you're angry. Talk all the emotions you want. We can have great therapy sessions. That's wonderful. You want to talk halacha? So many sources. There'd be no difference than someone coming to me and saying, you know, this person unfortunately uh, diagnosed with this illness. And I say, just, just leave it alone. You know, says, what are you talking about? You need to have aggressive treatment. I say to both of them, what are your sources? Are you an MD? You're a professor, you're a researcher, and you could show me your research on this specific Cancer or disease? No, I just feel it. Thanks for sharing your feelings. I appreciate it very much. <laughs> with anything. So whether it's the science of the human body or the science of talk, if you're coming from your own feelings, you're not an expert in this area, then just, you could say how you feel, that's fine. It has nothing to do with halacha. Just like that has nothing to do with medicine. There's no connection. You didn't research the sugya, then just admit, you don't know about it. You want to say, well, my doctor said that this is what we should have a great. Okay, so I'm possibly by my doctor. And that's what my doctor says. Maybe I'll get a second opinion from another doctor. And then I'll try to feel it out. Even though I'm not, ex okay, I'm two experts. You're going to try to figure out that's fine. Or my rabbi says, okay, it's fine. 
But you yourself acknowledge you didn't go ahead and research the topic, just plead the fifth. So you ask the average person about Yomot so if you're in the Tatilumi world, how do you not have a holiday? Are you crazy? And that's someone in the Haredi world, how do you have a holiday? Are you crazy? And let's look at the sources. Is that not a good idea? So Magen Avraham, anyone heard of the Magen Avraham? Yeah. So if you're talking about the last 500 years of Jewish scholarship, which is called the Aharonim area, after of Yosef Karo, so name some of the biggest names in the last five centuries. Some of the biggest names, biggest rabbis we had in the last five centuries. So you had in, in Vilna, you had who? The Vilna, gone. he was high up there, right? Frichadash, Tad, Shach. And of course, who is way up there? The Magen Avraham. The holiest, most well-known posting of the 20th century is whom? The Mishnah Brura. The most accepted post to grab by the 20th century by everyone in Halacha. And that's written by whom? The Chafetz Chaim. The Chafetz Chaim. He's the one who put, he's the one who put on, uh, what's it called? The Shmir Salashan onto the map. He wrote the Mishnah Brura on Halacha. Fill in, sits his davening. No one's going to make any moves in these topics without Mishnah Brura. Right? No one's going to make a move on this topic about the Mishra Brewer. That's, that's, that's it. So, and who does he quote thousands of times? Who's the base of Mishra Brewer? Whom? Magen Avraham. So Magen Avraham is holy of hope. Does anyone want to see what he says about Yom Hatzvah? Well, you're not going to see it because he lived 200 years ago. But does he give us a concept? And now we have to see, wow, could that be a source for us in making a new holiday? So let's try as objectively as possible to see what's an idea of a new holiday. Can you make a new holiday? And who's you? Do you need the Gedole Hador? Do you need the Rabbanut? Do you need the Sanhedrin? Oh, let's look. Let's look. Let's look. Let's look. So is there a rabbi today who decided that yesterday is a trial? Of course. Who is? It's all, it's endless discussion. So today the focus is on creating a new holiday. And Mietz um, Hashem, next week, it might take two weeks to do this idea of the new holiday. Next week we'll look into the idea of Halal. And Halal was a brach without a brach. What are the sources? For this way, for that way. Which applies to which part of the Jew of Jews? Because sometimes there's a quorum of a certain city. When Beautiful, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about. There was always a doubt of opinion. There was always, and that's long as it's source based. Hello and Shah, there was always the doubt and different Ooh. opinions. Yeah, and we have to see. But Gain of Ram himself, yeah. good question. He's so well known by his his uh, work. <clears throat> He's so well known by his work that let's see. Magain of Ram, Gain of Avram Avli, Aleph Bet Lamed Yud. Mikila called this Kalish. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, in memory of uh, the rabbi. Yeah, Rabbi. That's all. Yeah, we'll learn in memory. Benjamin Chaim Ben. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, Harrison, I remember having mind the uh, Nishma, Lily Nishma Tell, big, uh, big rabbi from Canada passed away. The rabbi from Canada, holy man. Okay, yeah, okay, so let's get started. Yes. Is the source black and white? Because many, many would then research the source, but come up with. Great, nothing wrong with the Machlok is the Shem Shemai. That's right. So that your research is your source is what? Very good question. So Rav Moshe Feinstein, 70 years ago, he started writing his chuvas. <laughs> he says, who am I to write chuvas? And more than 70, it's more already in Europe in the 30s. <laughs> and more like 90, 100 years ago, who am I to write? He says, you know what? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm saying things that are not what God had in mind. Right? So. In his introduction, he wrote, the job of a post is to go and do level 
headed research into a sugya. But all the sukkim, all the gemaras, all the rishonim, whatever sources are available, they're not talking about Joe Shmo, it's about a posek who's a Talmud Chacham, who's learning for decades. It's like a doctor, it's not going to make major decisions unless he's very, very, very well trained. So here too. So he's a well-trained posek, goes through the topic. The topic is the psukim, the gemaras, midrash, halacha, all the sources, takes all the sources, applies it to the case in front of him, and gives it his best understanding. That's the posek job. Now, what about if ultimately, ultimately, it's not what God had, it doesn't matter what Moshe says. The post-sake's job is to research in an objective manner. The final conclusion, this is final conclusion, doesn't matter. And Rav Moshe says, this is what the famous Quran Erevin means, Elu Be'elu, Divrei Elohim Chayim. They're both Divrei Elohim Chayim. They're both Divrei Elohim Chayim. One is not what God said. God didn't say to do Halal. Well, he did say to do, he did say to make Right? God says, this is the right way. It's not the right way. It doesn't matter. As long as the post sake is going through all of the literature that we have, the sources available, as long as he is doing that, then that is the proper approach, and that's it. And then Rav Moshe is right, and if Rav Salvechik argued with him, he's right. And the Talmidim for Rav Salvechik are right. Talmidim for Rav Moshe, they may be all right. It's the process. <laughs> Find himself a rub and ah, so the average person finds a rub and that's it. He goes with the rub, she goes with the rub. And the rub himself, who, who feels equipped to paskin, so he's doing the research directly. And the that question, yeah, yeah, and yeah, that's it. So a person who's not opposed to himself, then he, then he or she will just follow the rub and they're fine. That's their job. Yeah. And a person opposing, then their job is to do good objective research without feelings pulling them this way, that way, just straight, clear research. And, and the Talmud, the Gemara trains a person to be a thinker, clear. Look at Rav Moshe, look at Rav Moshe. Let's take our topic. Did Rav Moshe sell the Yom Of course not. Did he hold this as beginning of the Gula? Of course not, okay? But let's take an area where it's so clearly El Zashkaf, which I do not, I love Rav Moshe, fine, I love, but his Zashkaf, I'm a day, so I do not embrace that one, I embrace others. But that, a, a Shaila came up. A flag in the shul. He was an Israeli flag in the shul 50, 60 years ago. And the guy said, I can't dive in the shul. There's an Israeli flag. And I'm going to leave and make a new minion. Some out of town place. We're making new minions. is going to be a big problem. Yeah, you have a minion every other house. But there was a big deal. So Rav Moshe goes through it. He says, it's wrong to have the flag. It's not right. It's from the Sionim. Rashaim. He was not into the Sionim over there. He was not. And, but let's analyze what happens when you have something in the shul that shouldn't be there. He says, well, is it a Vodazar? Well, they have an American flag too. Well, so it's not idolatrous. It's just some symbol that they have. Does it take away from the Gdusha of the shul? No. And he brings all the sources to prove from Gemara Megillah. It doesn't take away from the Gdusha. You have a minion. Do you have the full status of Tzvila Bashi Seaboard? Yeah. No, no, right. And he shows sources that this continues to be So you have your halachic minion. You have a Seaboard. When you break a tzibur into two, what happens? You have a smaller minion that takes away from rov am hadras melech. We have bigger tzibur is more mukubad. It causes fight, which in this is the rice to have lotisna and, and, and fights between Jews. So let's just add everything he says on a very emotional topic. The emotions are left outside his room, his base medrash. He's just taking Gemara, sugyas. He has his hashkafa, Medina Yisrael on the side. what they represent, what the flavor That's his hashkafa. And he just applies it too. Amazing. That is a pose, source based psak, removing all emotions to the side. You hear what I'm saying? So, a person at the level that could do that, that's great. If not, you follow your pose. Who's right? It doesn't matter. It's the process, it's the halachic process that's crucial. He said they should take the flag out. Moshe said better they take both the flags out. They don't, that should not be in the shul. (laughs) They should not be in the shul. He said that's his position. Okay, but the situation that you have where you could dive in there with the flags in the shul. Or leave and make a break with a minion. He says, puzzle traits, do not do that. But everything he says is source space, source space, source space. That is Fila Batsibo, has a Gadush of a shul. And there is no Issa to be there. It's not like you put it up there. <coughs> and leaving is going to cause Machlokas and a rift in the whole community. And Achbis and Kalei Israel. So it's all halacha. You hear? That's it. That's a beautiful truva, in my opinion. Every truva is always beautiful. That's a very emotional topic, and you can get all crazy. No straight, clear, sock. You hear? So that's it. 
So it could be that we have a source here. And right off the bat, this source in no way is going to prove Yom Hatzvot, and you'll see why in a second. But that's fine. Here's the source. This is the Magen Avram. As I said, one of the deep, the Gra, the Gra is always quoting whom? Magen Avram. The Gra, the Gra, the Sacher, and the Gra. He's quoting Magen Avram. And Mishra, of course. So what does he say? He writes over here. Yecholim b'nei ir l'takein b'haskama u'v'cheirem. The people of a community can institute with the haskama an agreement among their rabbis u'v'cheirem alehem. And someone who doesn't follow the agreement will be in cheirem, like excommunicated. Alehim v'albehim acharehem. Okay, on themselves and all future generation. They can metakein what? Lasod Purim the Yom Shena Sebonis to make their own Purim. When a day a miraculous victory happened for them, a Nais happened, a Tala, they can make it. And who's he quoting? It's his own idea now. Maram al Shakar, he quotes a Rishon. I'm not gonna Ram quotes a Rishon a few centuries earlier from him, who says. That, yeah, a great miracle happens. You can make your own, he calls it, a Purim. Purim means a day to celebrate God's blessing. Okay? So this is the Magen Avram. Now, that's our first major source in commentaries on the Shulchan Aruch that bring up such a fascinating concept of making a new day. Now, there's thousands of questions that have to be asked. First, we have to get into, well, is this Yom Atzimot, creation of the state? A nays. So that's a, that you have to plug in now. The Sabah Rebbe is going to laugh at that. The Sabah Rebbe loves the Magen Avram. Sabah Rebbe loves Mar Al Shaka Rishon. But he's going to say, Nace, what does that have to do with the establishment of the state? So, of course, you're going to first argue on your hushkuf and your attitude towards the creation of the Jewish state, which is created A before the Mashiach, which maybe has a major problem, and created by non from Jews. So, what do you do with that? Do you look at such a creation as a Nace or not? So first, you have to open up your Hashkafa book. This is a rare phenomena, rare phenomena where halacha, first you have to establish your Hashkafic principle about a topic. And then, and only then can you talk about the next topic. Mo, 99% of the topic has nothing to do with Hashkafa. Tefillin. Should I put on a bit Tom Tefillin after I finish davening or not? Okay. Is Kinola kidney or not? What bracha do I make on rice cakes? These are dry halachic topics. Nothing to do with hashkaf. These are pure, not dry. I, don't, I mean, pure halach. Do do well. What's your hashkaf about rice in the world? Do you think it's proper to eat rice? Is it really unkind? And to step on rice and treat it like that and not and kill them? It's not a hashkaf issue. It's pure halacha. It's pure halacha. Here, you have to first get your hashkafic opinions. Uh, where else do you have? It's rare. Throw out the middle. Let me open up any halach here. Let's see what opens up. Yom Kippurim. A woman goes ahead, tough face, Yom Kippur. Okay, so tough face, you a few simon later, a woman goes ahead and she's pregnant on Yom Kippur and she says, Doctors, I, I need to eat. And the doctor says, No, you don't. And then the rabbi is there hearing the woman and hearing the doctor. But she says, I know my body. And even if she's not pregnant, stop, she says, I need it. The doctor says, No, you don't. The rabbi is like, oh my gosh, I gotta give my drush, you guys work it out. <laughs> He's got a poskin, right? It's a hashkaf point. No. How look at the else with? So we assume that a person has their own senses, and even if medically can't be proven, we rely on the uh, person, the, the patient, him or herself. That's a hashkaf. Huh? Open anything, anything you open, a Rosh Hashanah. What are the length of the sounds of a show for blowing? Well, it depends on how much you want to inspire the people. <laughs> no, no. Halachically, what's a shvarim? Halachically, what's a trua? What is a takia? That's it. If you're looking in the sources and you're just trying to figure it out, we'll figure out the sound. He and this topic is so emotional and people go crazy because it is an emotional hashkafic topic before it turns into what? The halachic topic. You first have to establish your attitude towards the state. And then and only then can you start talking about your halachic stance. Do you hear that? 
That would be similar to having a flag in the shul. If your holes or most holes, a flag represents something bad. So there's nothing to talk about. The other side that holds the flag actually something beautiful and represents the gaula. Oh, now you have a new question. Something represents the gaula is its place where? And it's just a nice shayla. So first you have to establish your hashkafa. 99% of the times, halacha is halacha. You can take the sat marav and rakuk and put them into discussions on any place in the shulchan aruch. You wouldn't even know that they are worlds upon a hashkaf of Zionism. That's because that's a specific topic. Most halakha is the same. I'm famous. This, that's all the same. You hear? So now you have the Maram, a shake quoted by the Magan Avram, saying that there's a concept of making a holiday, a Purim, on the day when an ace happened. It's a major source. Now you say, okay, it's Magan Avram. That's pretty important. But did anyone pick up on Magan Avram? Did it make its way into the halachic sources? It's an interesting source that he quoted a few hundred years ago. So you have to research. So what you look. The criteria for determining the name? Oh, very good. So you need to define, hey, is this a halachic source that was embraced? And if it is, well, how do you define names? How do you define names? So maybe are there any precedent for different communities that didn't need to make And then we could see, does this fit the criteria? Does it need to be a nice nigla yeah. where uh, the yams have split? Or could it just be the timing was really, really crazy? And, uh, you know, in, in, in Kovna, the goyim attacked us and we were able to fend them off. And it was odds were against us. And still we survived. And we're going to make a holiday. Let's see. What's the precedence in the different cases? There are dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of Purims that were set up over the centuries. So let's take a look at that. So that's already from the Gemara. Now we're talking post, post Talmud. That was set up, Hanukkah was set up, and that was the last holiday set up around how many years ago? 100, 200, 500,000? 15 billion? Oh, that's evolution, another topic. How many years? Over 2,000. 200 years ago, approximately, assuming uh, Hanukkah was about 150 before the common era. The rabbis were still around. The Talmud was still around. It was just being created. So now it's post-Talmud. So you have dozens of these programs that were made. And what's the criteria? Good question. And the fact that dozens were made, it seems like this Magen Avram was embraced. So let's take the number one post. Say, we'll skip right over. You have the Hassam Sofer in the 1900s, early 1800s. 19th century, early 1800s, major, major post -sake. Does he go ahead and embrace, does he embrace such a concept? So Hassam Sofer, Kuf, Sadi, Aleph, you're all heard of Hassam Sofer, Hungarian Jewry, right? He was the Rav, the Rav. And so Kuf, Sadi, Aleph, this in Chelek, Aleph, Orachayim, and Kuf, Sadi, Aleph, what does he write? Can a community or an individual make a yontif? He quotes Maram Ashaka, of course. Some say Alashka, some call it Alashaka, whatever his name, however he's pronounced. Magan Avram says, You are able to make a takana. A new yantif affirmed. He uses a more harif word, chayavim obligated. Even if you grew up in this town, let's call it uh, Purim Tiveria. That was a Purim Tiveria. Now you move to Beit Shemesh. You made Aliyah from Tiveria to Beit Shemesh. So I'm not living anymore. I don't need to keep the sixth of Tammuz because some miracle that happened that we were saved. Um, uh, some Arab attack, let's say, and they made an ace, then they declared it an ace. I don't, I don't have to keep it. I moved out. No, even if you move, you still keep it. Where there were specific sources, and then he quotes who Paskin, who, which giant of an Achron Paskin like the Maram, who? The one we just read inside, Mar the Magain. Aha, uh -huh. whoa, 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 that's already a, a shell shell. We're getting a chain. We're developing a chain of, of chain of psaq. Maram Shaka from 700 years ago. Then the Magan Avram from 400 years ago. Then Hassam Sofa 200 years ago. Wow, 
And let's go to the post take of the 20th century. Who's that? Of time. Does he embrace it as well? That'd be pretty serious chain we have going over here. And sure enough, sure enough, tough rage, pay vav. He mentions this several times. We'll quote from tough rage, pay vav. What does he say? So obviously, you can all guess. What does he say? Does he quote the Maganav, the Chasam Sof Maganav Raham and Ramal Shark? Does he quote this on the Torah? Absolutely. Absolutely. Tough rage, pay vav. They can go ahead and metakain with askama, askama from the rabbis, and a cheirim. Meaning, watch out if you don't keep this. On them and future generations. So it's not left unclear. Oh, it's not just the first generation. You might say, no, those people that survived the challenge, the outbreak, the illness, the war, whatever it was, they, no, 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 for all future generations, Lasso Purim Biyom Shena Sabonais to make a Purim on the day that a nace happened to them. Now that's a hundred years ago. Dear Shu is a comment on Mishnah Purim from the last few years. This was just put out the last few years. So maybe they bring rabbis that say, no, 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 we don't hold this way. Maybe, right? And what does he say in the Dear Shu? He adds on. He says, and if you make a su'ud on that day to commemorate the nace, that su'udah, which is made to remember God's wonders, is called a su'udat, oda su'udat mitzvah. So the Dirshu only continues with the Messiah and adds on and says it's a su'udat mitzvah, as we discussed in Tafrit Sadi Zion. And so to a Tafrit Ayin. And what else should he do on that day? He should give tzedakah. Uh, he should go ahead and say Parshas Toda about the Korban Toda thanking Hashem and do something for the community. But the Torah, don't uh, uh, that's for sure. And you should go somewhere alone. Go into the base medrash before davening in the shul after just in your room. The Smoach. Talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. Last Shabbos, hour and a half in shul, talking about all Hashem's gifts in Medina Yisrael. And then last Sunday, the short version. That, that's what I'm doing. I'm thanking Hashem. So the idea is clear, okay, is clear that if someone says, hey, you know what, all your uh, crazy Zionism, do what you want with it, but don't create new holidays. That's no precedent for, really. Well, then you're rejecting they reshown him the Maram, the Magen Avram, some mm -hmm. so fair, and the Mishabura. That's just five I mentioned. I'm like, oh, but everyone else argues. That's not, that's not the case. It's not the case. So there's major halachic precedent that not only are you allowed to, but the Maram's words are what? Oh, yeah. I am. So this is not a place where you could just go ahead and you know I'll shave out. I'll just I'm just gonna leave the whole thing out. I don't want to get into the trouble. Oh yeah, Kfui tova is big trouble. Ingratitude is big trouble. Passivity is not an approach here. You go ahead and you maintain and nothing good happened over here. You have no reason to thank our God. I, I have Rahmanis on you. I do. I really do. I honestly do. I look at you as a as, as a kid whose parents took care of him. For 20, 30, 40, 50 years, and then you go to a psychologist, and all, all you do at your age 17 is what? There's this me, that's me, that's why I'm this way, that's why I'm that way. You have some parents that mess up kids that are, that are, that are horrible and, and really is dysfunctional and, and terrible things happen. But very, very, very often the parents are wonderful, did a great job, and I made a mistake here and there, and then the kid all he has to do is just see the bad. So that's all you do. You don't see anything good here. No kibbutz galia, no the gathering eggs all. No, the first law that the government made was that any Jew could come home after a thousand years of being left into the in the dungeon. They don't say anything good. More yeshivas in any place in the world, more in any place in the world, in every town, kashras, nothing. They don't say any of that. I feel bad. I'm I feel I'm well, listen. And you'll say, well, what do you mean? He's not in trouble. He's just following his road. Who taught him that? So I am hoping that it, and in May of Esmashan now, when he goes up to Shamaim, I hope that that's his defense. A hard defense. I just follow my rabbi. What am I supposed to do? I think my rabbi showed me the old negativity and I was negative. I hope that's a good defense. I'm serious. Hope that's a defense. But I do feel better. So let's say it's a legitimate defense. No, Mahaba. I feel bad. They have the greatest show on earth. You don't appreciate it. The sad fall of Hazan. 
besides Olam Abba. So hopefully Olam Abba, he's good or she's good because you're relying on your rabbis that told you differently. That told you the Samra view or Roshach's view, which is much more negative. And then you're just following your Rav, like we said before. I just feel bad because it's such a nice show. I feel bad people just miss it. But that's another emotional discussion on, on my part. Either way, let's just summarize part one. So the question is an excellent question. You can't just go ahead and make up a holiday because you feel like making a holiday up. Okay? On the other hand, you can't just reject the concept because you feel like it's wrong. The only thing you can do is source-based. Halacha. That's it. Okay? And we see that in, in, in any area of halacha has to be source-based. This is more of an emotional topic, but before you get into the question of oh, make a holiday for this great nace, first you have to define, do you maintain that it's a nace? But it's not a personal thing that you could decide what so you need doing. rabbis you to go have, ahead. You have. Good. Uh, you've got to follow. Your, you got you your follow the rabbis. I'm just trying to show you that the approach the of the rabbis in, who the have gone this way. Fine. So I'm right. saying each you one should follow their rabbi. Correct. To. So each one should follow their rabbi. But where did the rabbis come up with this? I've heard some of Uzi, Rav Goen, Rav Vadya. So where did they come up? So now we're trying to show. So they came up with, you have the from the Rishonim era. I'm just giving you a few of the sheetas, but I'm trying to show the shashel of the chain. We showed him Europe to the already early Achronim. It's not mentioned in the Shulchan Aruch, but that doesn't mean it's not a You see that the Achronim still jumped on it, even though it was Shulchan Aruch didn't write it for whatever reason. In fact, he doesn't write it, doesn't mean it's not a law. It means whatever he didn't write it. So you have the Magen Avram, the Chasam Sofa, and Mishra Brewer, and then the recent post came too. And they talk about what to do on such a day. You talk to Hashem, you thank Hashem, you have a Sudas Hoda. Okay, now this clear precedent for making a new holiday. Now, of course, the question is A, for new holiday for Nace, how do you define an Nace, right? Now we see it has been accepted for halacha, for halacha this approach. Now you have to define what's an Ace and what do you do on that day? So we saw a few things. We saw a few things. We saw having a Sudat Soda, talking to Hashem about it, thanks him. Maybe helping out the community, giving Saket Seabor. Appreciate you still around because of Hashem's Nisim and contributing to you. So some of those. But wait, what about Hala? We didn't say anything about Hala yet. We don't know about that. But we just saw a precedent for making what they call a new home. Do you hear that? That's part one. And um, yes, Hashem will do part two next week. Okay. Oh, yeah. It is. It's a suspense. It's a topic of suspense, but it's big. It's big. It's big. And we'll see uh, one of the most unique sources we're going to see next week. Also, a lot. And we'll go through more of the Hassam Sofa. We'll see that there was a Pichadash who did argue, but most rejected him. But we'll see. We'll try to objectively treat the Sugya, like we're supposed to do anything. Okay, everyone should have a wonderful day.